Welcome back to AM Customs, guys. Today we're going to go over how to do a cast aluminum repair. Our victim today is a 302 intake plenum. Had some friends that were doing some little bit of port work on the intake and accidentally blew through one of the dog legs on it. So today we're going to see if we can't patch this up and fix this cast aluminum. Let's get started. <laughs> So today we're going to be TIG welding this intake up together and you're going to need a couple things to start off with. You're going to need some sort of deburring tool because we're going to need to clean up the area around the hole and prep it. You're going to want scotch bright, preferably a fine red would probably work but the blue works really good. Uh, you're going to want a map gas or propane torch, some acetone, some clean rags. When it comes to your torch setup. You're going to want to probably use like an eighth inch tungsten so you can handle the thicker material and the amperage going through it. So let's get going with this. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing you're going to grab is your carbide burr or die grinder. So this is a aluminum intake plenum off the top of an engine. So it's going to have tons of grease and oils that are just kind of baked into it. And what we want to try to do is clean up around our hole or crack or whatever your case might be and you want to grind down and get those surface impurities off because that cast iron is kind of porous and it's going to want to hang on to those so your ultimate objective here is just grind that surface off if you have a crack or fracture in your case you're going to want to actually grind a little bit out of that crack or fracture so you can get some penetration of the weld in this case we have a hole so we just want to clean up a wide swath around it so this is not the ideal bit for cleaning aluminum your ideal bit would only have three or four flutes on it and be less prone to gumming up but this is what I had so that's what I used but I will leave the link in the description to a better carbide so next we're gonna move on to our blue scotch bright pad these will be a link in the description as well not everybody does this step this is kind of going the extra mile and kind of polishing out that surface because with cast aluminum you are still gonna to have to deal with all the impurities that are embedded in the metal itself and a part of the original casting so maybe this just makes me feel better might not actually do anything so once I'm content with my scotch bright job I like to get in there with a little bit of acetone and a rag and we'll just make sure there's no surface oils from either of our prior two processes and get those all cleaned off. Next we're going to bring out the Infratech heat lamp. I'll drop a link in the description for this below. But we're going to set our part up underneath of it for probably about an hour or so and just bring the ambient temperature of the part up well above room temperature. The reason we're going to do this is aluminum dissipates heat extremely well. And if your part is not above room temperature, it's going to cool your weld down way too fast. The reason it's important for your weld not to cool off too fast it goes back to the impurities and the different molecular structures of your casting itself and your filler rod that you're going to be added into it. There are two different materials and they're going to have two different shrink rates. And the faster that your part cools off, the more likely you're going to have a chance that you're going to get cracking or delamination in your weld because they're going to shrink at different rates and cause that delamination. So while you're waiting for that to heat up, I'm going to turn my machine over to DC positive and ball my tungsten real quick. Most newer inverter machines, you do not have to worry about this, but I have an old big box Synchrowave 250, so it's one of the things I got to do. Now you do not have to have a heat lamp to do this. You can use an oven or even just setting it out in the sun is going to be better than nothing. I'm going to say you want the whole part somewhere in between 150 and 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Next we're going to bring out our torch and apply some higher concentrated heat around the problem area. The intention for this is to bring out any impurities that might be resting just below the surface and just give us an even better chance at cleaning this area up. 
while we're doing this, don't forget to subscribe for future videos. And so in this case, as you can see, I got a chunk of raw aluminum tacked to the top of the hole. This is because I couldn't fit a copper backer on the back side. You'll have to forgive me, I'm still working on my arc shot, so I'm going to do my best to explain what you're going to want to see here. Strike your arc and ease part way into the pedal. Hold your torch stationary for 3-5 to five seconds until it appears the contaminants have burnt off the surface of your pedal. Once the contaminants have burned away, start moving forward by feeding as much rod as you can into the weld. So in this scenario, the customer was going to continue porting on the inside of the intake plenum, so I went ahead and made multiple passes to just kind of fill that valley up so they had plenty of meat to grind back out for their port job. So let's continue and get this thing filled up. And here is our final product. Now, after you get your weld done, you want to go right back under that heat lamp or out in the sun or back into your lightly cooled oven, whatever that might be, so that it will not cool off too fast and you will minimize any cracking or delamination. Okay, so that didn't go too bad. You always strive to make it even better, but it's definitely acceptable and it will hold together just fine. I set it outside to let it cool down. Don't want to leave it under the heat lamp because that won't let it cool down completely. Put it under the heat lamp for just a little bit and then set it outside in the sun. One of the things I wanted to go over is uh, the rod that I use. I ended up using 5356, which is not necessarily the best thing you want to use on your aluminum casting. I would recommend 40, 43, but 5356 is all that I had. The 40, 43 has 5% silicon and that is going to have a lower shrink rate which is going to be better for your casting. It's a lot lower tensile strength but so is cast aluminum versus your extruded materials. You want to use your 5053 for most of your standard 6061 kind of stuff. Your 5 and 6 series but your cast aluminum would be more closer to your 2 through 4 series aluminum. So Definitely try to get your 4043 if you need to do a repair in that case. So if you're looking to do a cast aluminum repair, I would say the number one most important thing is clean and prep your material. Number two most important thing is preheat your piece a little bit so the ambient temperature doesn't cool down your weld area super fast and you get high shrink rates and that crack out because you're just slightly dissimilar materials. You're going to have dissimilar materials because that's kind of the definition of cast aluminum. It's not a similar material in itself. Um, and number three, they just add lots and lots of filler rod. You want to get as much of that pure material into that weld as you can. It's going to help everything stick together better and come up with uh, better results. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you want to see other fabrication tips and tricks coming up, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those. Hit that bell so it notifies you when the next video is coming up. And go build something, guys.